Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on lipid nanoparticles, also known as LMPs. My name is Brian from Custer Genome, and I'll be discussing the background and strengths of LMPs, its current market applications, and on the emerging microfluidic technology to synthesize LMPs. Let's begin. Before we start, here's a quick summary on what I'll be going over today. First, I'll give a brief overview on LMPs and talk about what they are. Then I'll go into the applications of LMPs and the current market for the technology. So introducing the sales and landscape of LMP-enabled therapeutics and give a general idea of where LMPs stand in terms of medicine. I'll also present two case studies that show the utilization and demonstrate the capabilities of LMPs. And after that, I'll transition to talk about the synthesis methods of LMPs, so how they're developed. And in this section, I'll be also covering both conventional methods and more novel methods such as microfluidics for LMP synthesis. I'll also be taking a deeper dive into the mechanisms behind microfluidics and covering why the method may be the best for LMP synthesis moving forward. And lastly, I'll finish up with a quick introduction and overview on Genome's LMP synthesis systems, which actually use microfluidic technology for LMP development. So what is a lipid nanoparticle? Lipid nanoparticles, or LMPs, are a cutting-edge class of nanoscale delivery system designed to transport and protect therapeutic molecules such as drugs and RNA. They have gained significant attention in the field of medicine and biotechnology due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and for their ability to enhance the bioavailability and efficacy of drugs by improving stability and target specificity for points of interest within the body. The basic structure of an LMP consists of a lipid bilayer surrounding the hydrophobic core, and this structure allows the LMPs to encapsulate hydrophobic drugs or nucleic acids while keeping the hydrophilic components on the surface, and this makes them more stable and compatible with the aqueous of the human body. Researchers can even modify the composition of the lipid bilayer and the core to optimize stability, drug loading capacity, release kinetics, and target specificity. These versatile nanoparticles have garnered attention for their potential in delivering mRNA, sRNA, and hydrophobic drugs, each offering distinct therapeutic advantages. Some other notable applications of LMPs are with the CAR T cell and gene therapy, which I will mention later in our case studies. Now, moving on to current applications and market forecasts for LMPs. From the graph on the left, you can see the global sales of LMP-based genomic medicines for 2021, as well as the projected sales for the next 15 years. In 2021, we can see that there are approximately $51 billion in sales, with 99% of those sales being from DNA slash RNA vaccines. This is expected due to the COVID-19 pandemic and how these vaccines are among the only FDA-approved LMP-based therapeutics at the time. However, over the course of the next decade and a half, we can see a gradual shift to other categories of genomic medicine, such as gene addition, such replacement, gene expression control, and gene editing, as these products are further researched and developed. Likewise, this is why we see a big dip after 2021, as the demand for DNA slash RNA vaccines for COVID has gone down, and so has sales. As research and other studies of LMP-enabled therapeutics in the gene therapy categories get closer and closer to reaching the market and FDA approval, the sales in the genomic medicines will continue to grow in the future, with sales forecasted to almost reach the peak demand of DNA slash RNA vaccines in 2021 during COVID-19. These next graphs show the landscape of LMP-enabled therapeutics for in vivo genomic medicine as of December 2021. Graph A shows the distribution of LMP-enabled therapeutics within the development pipeline. So you can see that even at the end of December 2021, there's a very small percentage of marketed LMP therapeutics, with the majority of assets being still in the developmental slash clinical trial phases. Graph B depicts the overall penetration of LMP-enabled therapeutics for in vivo genomic medicine, and we can see that when comparing LMP to non-LMP medicines, the LMP-based ther therapeutics has barely scratched the surface. And finally, with Graph C, Graph C displays the number of assets in each category of genomic medicine, as well as stage of, of development. And overall, these graphs show the potential for LMP-based therapeutics for the future. Combined with the data from the last slide, we can see already how much research and resources are being poured into the development of LMP-enabled genomic medicines, despite not making any sales currently. And this further just shows the promising outlook on the applications of the technology for the future. Now moving on to the case study, um, this is a click case study using CRISPR-Cas9 for AT ATTR treatment. So transtheratine amyloidosis is a life-threatening disease caused by the accumulation of misfolded transtheratine proteins. And in this clinical trial, researchers used a lipid nanoparticle, NTLA, to target the TTR in a phase one clinical study and evaluated the results for safety and efficacy. And in the top left diagram, you can see the schematic for the NTLA LMP. And the, this LMP carries an mRNA for the Cas9 protein and a single guide RNA that targets the misfolded TTR protein. 
Now looking at the bottom graph of the results, we can see that as TTR gene editing increased due to the NTLA LMP, TTR mRNA expression and protein production decreased. And this showed that the LMP is able to effectively aid in the reduction of the misfolded transferatine proteins. So this case study just shows an example of a new application of LMPs for gene medicine outside of the DNA slash RNA vaccines um, in the form of gene replacement. And this next case study is on CAR T cell therapy and other emerging use of LMPs for cardiac injury and more specifically fibrosis. So fibrosis is characterized by thickening or scarring of tissue, which can lead to many health issues and health risks. And for this study, the researchers used CD5-targeted LMPs to create antifibrotic chimeric antigen receptor T cells in hopes of reducing fibrosis. So in figure D, figure D shows that 83% of the T cells express the antifibrotic chimeric antigen receptor that the researchers were aiming for after being exposed to the LMP. Um, and you can see in the top left with the schematic of how the study was supposed to go. Furthermore, with figure E, Figure E shows that LMP-generated T cells were also able to effectively kill fibroblast activation protein expressing target cells in vitro and also in a dose-dependent manner. This showed the success of the research, and because of this, the researchers then transitioned their tests to in vivo studies using mice models and were able to continue their results in those as well, once again showing the use of LMPs. So this just shows another new application of LMPs for gene medicine outside of DNA and RNA vaccines once again in the form of CAR T-cell therapy um, slash gene editing. Now transitioning into the synthesis methods of LMPs, on the left we can see a, the conventional method of LMP development. Methods like extrusion, thin film hydration, and solvent injection have been the cornerstones of LMP production, and while effective, they each come with their own sets of advantages and challenges. Um, extrusion, for example, on the bottom, is known for producing uniform sized LMPs with low polydispersity index, meaning more uniform nanoparticles, but it comes at the cost of it being very time consuming and costly, especially when trying to scale up to the larger scale production. Likewise, with thin film hydration, although the method is well established, it lacks reproducibility and consistent production of LMPs, which is very important. And this is where microfluidics come in. Compared to the conventional methods, microfluidics offer superior control over LMP characteristics such as size, surface charge, and drug loading. By being able to control parameters such as flow rates and flow rate ratio of the reagents, LMP characteristics can be carefully tuned to whatever application they are being used for. This level of, pre of precision can lead to improved drug delivery and therapeutic efficacy. Microfluidics are also much more easily scalable when considering the equipment and devices needed for synthesis, and also allows for less wasted material um, during LMP synthesis process, which greatly reduces the cost. The core mechanism behind microfluidics revolves around the precise manipulation of fluids at the micro scale. Micromixers induce a chaotic flow patterns, promoting rapid and thorough blending of fluids. These micromixers can be tailored to specific applications, enabling research to re achieve desired mixing performances, as you can see with various approaches slash mixer types in the middle. In the middle section, we can see the common micromixer geometries that are used now. So starting from the top left, we have the T-junction, which is a widely used design where two fluid streams intersect at a T-shaped junction, inducing rapid mixing due to shear forces at the interface. The staggered herringbow to the right is a pattern of a herringbow-shaped grooves generating secondary flows resulting in effective mixing. And on the bottom left, we have bifurcating mixers. These mixers have multiple inlets and outlets promoting intricate fluid mixing through repeated bifurcation of the streams and merging of those streams. The Tesla mixer is very similar in principle to the bifurcating mixer in separating and merging flows and is actually what Prestigenome uses for its own microfluidic chips. And to highlight the key parameters for microfluidic mixing, total flow rate, flow rate ratio, and pump type all have a significant effect on the end product of LMP synthesis. So total flow rate, for example, determines the overall speed and efficiency of the mixing process. Flow rate ratio affects the degree of mixing and also the final composition of the mixture. And pump types, there are various pump types, such as syringe pumps or pneumatic pumps, and which drive fluid flow throughout the microfluidic device, and each offers their own distinct advantages and limitations. In summary, microfluidics harness the principles of chaotic mixing through micromixers, enabling efficient and controlled fluid manipulation at the micro scale. And this technology finds applications in various fields, including nanoparticle formation for drug delivery systems. And with further advancements and understanding, microfluidics holds the potential to revolutionize pharmaceutical and biotechnological research and development. And even now, large companies such as Pfizer and Moderna are using and have used microfluidics 
technology to emerge and should develop their mRNA vaccines. And microfluidics are not only limited to the large scale and are also being used in the smaller scale for research and development, as well with studies coming from all types of universities, including top research universities such as MIT. And also this expands upon just the DNA and RNA vaccines seen with Pfizer and Moderna to more gene editing approaches as we discussed earlier. So to finish off, I would like to briefly introduce Prestatone standard generator product line that uses microfluidics for LMP synthesis. So starting on the left, we have our two smaller scale systems suited for early stage research, discovery, and screening with the Flex S on the top and Flex M on the bottom. The Nanogener Pro is our fully integrated mid-size system that is great for preclinical studies and mid-stage screening. And then we have our large scale systems in the nano generator max and max plus, which can be used for clinical development and all the way up to GMP purposes. And lastly, we also offer custom solutions to best suit the application for whatever you're looking to use your LMPs for. And our OEMs are actually capable of going over 20 liters for throughput and can even do multi sample screening up to 96 samples at once. Lastly, thank you everyone for listening. And if you have any questions or want anything answered, please don't hesitate to reach out via email at info at .com, or you can visit our website too if you want to learn more about our synthesis products. Thank you again for listening.